Good morning, people. How are you doing? Today is the 31st day of December 2023. It's the last day of the year. Um, we're getting ready to start up a brand new year, 2024. Ooh, I think the Mayans had something to say about 2024. If they didn't, uh, they really missed the boat on that one, didn't they? Uh, we're in for some shit this year. That's a goddamn fact. And... Uh, all we can do is just kind of keep plugging along. I wanted to spend today's video talking about just some recent things that have happened that have shown us that, uh, you know, this whole let government make government run like a business by business of business for business is really causing us a lot of concern and it should be causing causing everybody a lot of concern and i tell you the truth i am happy to the to in, in some respects that it's getting more attention from folks who used to blame everything on china 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 and the commies and the socialists um more people are coming around to understanding what the real fight is all about here so I thought I would, you know, share with you a couple stories. Recently, I got eight. Uh, it's just really when you when you boil them down, you see the same fucking root problem in each and every single one of them. So let's start off with two that will seem inconsequential. And that is uh, two football games. One from college football. And one from pro football. And you're like, oh, football, it's got sports. I'm not talking about sports. I'm talking about corporate intrusion into every aspect of our fucking lives. That's what we're talking about. And I'm going to use these two examples uh, as just two of eight to show you how that works. Briefly. First one's Florida State. They won all their games this year. Uh, they won their conference title. It's a Power 5 conference. They should be in the fucking playoffs. But they're not. Because uh, folks over at ESPN are, are really big fans of the SEC and Alabama. And so they had to get SEC and Alabama in to the playoffs. Why would ESPN have anything to do with it? Because ESPN carried 70-something percent of all the college bowl games. So when the committee got together and decided the ranking for all the different college football teams, they had to make an exception, get Florida State out, so they could put two teams in. Not just Alabama, but Alabama and Texas because Texas won their conference championship and because Texas had the only was the only team to have beaten Alabama. So if you're going to get Alabama in, an SET, SEC team in, you damn sure had to put fucking Texas in. So Florida State was left out. Uh, yesterday they played Georgia, who lost to Alabama by three points uh, on, on what appears to be a gift fucking uh, call. We'll talk about another one of those in a second. But <laughs> Georgia was out as well, so it had to be uh, Georgia couldn't go in, even though they, had, they were number one all year, because Alabama beat them with the gift call. It had to be Alabama, but Alabama couldn't get in with one loss if Texas didn't get in with one loss, because Texas also won their championship. So they had to make room for two. Michigan was there. Wisconsin was there, I think. And then Florida State would have been there, but they had to bring in Texas in order to bring in Alabama, an SEC team. And so Florida State had to go. And that's what happened. Because executives at ESPN knew that they would make more money with Alabama in the fucking playoffs. Plus, they're also... Alabama fans. So a corporation used their influence to cheat to rig the playoffs. You say, well, Scott, that, who really cares? Well, sure. Who really cares? Um, 
A lot of people here, even people who aren't Florida State fans, understood the ramifications of it. <laughs> this year they got four teams in the playoffs. Next year they got 12 teams in the playoffs. And if you think the rigging is going to stop now, you are sadly mistaken. It is all going to be about the fucking rig. Because no one did anything. There was no price to pay. Ergo, it's going to get worse next year. And they'll be rigging not just fucking football games, but they'll be rigging seedings. They'll be rigging everything. The whole thing will be rigged. Everything will be rigged. And our fucking view of a once, you know, people played, people played the game back in the day. They enjoyed it. They watched it later. They grew up. They got jobs. They got lives. But they still loved their fucking football games, their college football games, because they were... I don't want to say pristine or pure, but when there was a when there was a cheating scandal or some shit, it was punished severely. And people expected it to be punished. Because there was an expectation of authenticity. It was college, it was beyond the fucking grasp of the money grubbers. Now it's no longer. Now they get uh, name, image, and likeness contracts. People are going back and forth. People are bri bri openly bribing players to play for their fucking team. It's just corruption. It's just corruption. So, of course, in comes the fucking rigging for the, for the seedings. And that's just going to be the standard now, from now on. Everyone's now going to know that college football is just as fucking fake as our goddamn elections. And that's unfortunate. And that's just happened Yesterday, prime example. What happened? What did, what did Florida State do? They gave their starters the day off. They lost 63 to 3. Uh, had, that, had that not happened, had they gone in, even without their fucking number one quarterback who was injured, they would have played all of their fucking starters, including the fucking backup, the one who wasn't able to play the last game, including their backup roadmaker, and they would have made a game out of whoever they played, um, if not one. Um, but instead, this team that had pulled together and worked together and faced adversity and won all the way up, even they lost their fucking quarterback in the third, third to the last game. And they won the last fucking three. They won that one. They were down 14 nothing when he got injured. And they came back and slaughtered that team because they were pissed. They won 56 to 14, and they won the next two fucking games. So they had come together. They were showing you what the best of the best was when it comes to fucking heart, when it comes to teamwork, when it comes to working together to overcome obstacles. And they got shit on because a corporation, ESPN, flexed their muscle and decided, fuck you, we don't care about that. We're going with this. And so, what's the last fucking thing they, they, they take with them when they, the seniors take with them when they leave? Yeah, I'm sure people don't give a shit. Fuck them, who cares? They're just sports guys. These are kids. These are meaningful lessons. And these are lessons that are also broadcast yesterday to Tens of millions of people watching that game until they turned it off because Florida State just wasn't playing. They had to show up to get the money. They were under contract, so they did. But no one said they had to play the starters. So fuck you, ESPN. And it was on ESPN exclusively. And ESPN wouldn't let anybody on YouTube rebroadcast it so people could see it. No, they had to get their fucking shekels even after doing that to them. That's why they didn't play their goddamn starters. Fuck you. By halftime, people will turn that shit off and go someplace else. Because Florida State did not come to play. That's what corporate, corporate interest does to everything. Everything it fucking touches. It dirties it. 
it belittles it. It reduces it to profits and losses and nothing else. Nothing matters. The work those kids did, the fan base, the idea of what college football has been over the last 50, 60 years, fuck all that. Money. Same thing happened. Well, something similar happened <clears throat> last night when Detroit played Cowboys. Good game. Cowboys fucked it up again. Bad fucking coaching in the end. Throwing three, three times when they had to just kill the fucking clock. And back came Detroit, who drove all the way with a minute and 30-something seconds, something seconds left and no fucking timeouts, and they scored a touchdown. They were down by one point. And Detroit, their head coach said, fuck it, go for two. Win or lose right here, screw overtime. Calls a play in, <laughs> guy goes off, Ball snapped, fucking lineman runs out, catches a fucking pass, two-point conversion, Detroit wins, 20 seconds left, end of story. The story would have been how their coach, Dallas Cowboys coach, fucked it up by giving them the chance by not running the clock out and by throwing pass after pass after pass, incomplete, 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 rather than running the goddamn ball. How Dak Prescott, their quarterback, on a second and 14, decided to throw the fucking ball out of bounds rather than take a sack, when a sack would have taken 40 seconds off the clock, and that would have been the game. Stupid, 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 and fucking Detroit won that game. Eh, pull it back. Why? Illegal touching. Number 68 wasn't supposed to catch the ball. He didn't report in. However, he did report in as eligible. And you can see him walk up to the fucking ref and tell the ref, I'm reporting as eligible. And then after that conversation, he had to run over to tell the defense, the ref did by rule, that 68 had reported as eligible. That's why the ref ran over there to tell him real quick after he went and told them. But they threw the flag Five, six, seven, eight, ten seconds after the two-point conversion because someone whispered in that ref's ear, fuck that, do something. Uh, 70 reported as eligible, not 68. And that was that. Why? <laughs> Detroit has already won their division. They're either going to be a number two seed or a number three seed. Makes a difference, not a huge difference. Dallas needs to win that division. Jerry Jones, very wealthy. Very, very, very wealthy. Owner of fucking Dallas. He knows he's dying. He's 700 years old. He's going to see them get into the goddamn playoffs. He's going to see them get into the fucking Super Bowl. So, a home game is important. Philadelphia right now is poised to win the division, which means they'll get home games and Dallas will be away. Dallas sucks on the road. Dallas wants a fucking home playoff game. Period. End of story. That's going to happen. <laughs> so that's what happened. That's what happened. Now that will have an effect. My guess is today, Sunday, Sunday, let's take a close look at the Philadelphia games and see how many bad calls go Philly's way in order to propel Dallas into a one seed. The coach fucked up. Bad coaching. The quarterback, Dak Prescott, fucked up. Stupid decision. Take the sack. It's 40 seconds. They'll be giving the ball back with 20 seconds, 30 seconds, no timeouts. They can't fucking drive the field and score a touchdown. End the game. Take the fucking sack. What are you, stupid? Nope. He throws it out because he's stupid. Because he made a mistake. 
which he's prone to do. <laughs> Left to its own devices, if the refs hadn't openly cheated because they got a call, they have a thing in their ear, and the NFL head office is now constantly in that. They can communicate with the refs throughout the entire fucking game. You don't know this, but this is a fact. It's not a conspiracy theory. They make decisions. The NFL head office makes decisions in New York City on important games in terms of calls. So they have direct line of communication with the head referee. It's a fact. The NFL is in bed with the betting companies that the NFL advertises before, during, and after every single fucking game. Because online betting is now legal. In most states. And the NFL is in financial, biz in, in financial business with the betting companies. So, of course, the betting companies will inform the NFL, once the line goes through and the game starts off, where they'd be better off financially. Both the betting company and the NFL, depending on who wins and who loses. And the NFL has veto power or influence on the actual calls in the game. And they have that influence by having a little thing in the ear of the fucking head referee. People say, I've heard people talk about, oh, this is going to be big for the conspiracy theorist. <clears throat> Given all that, and that's all true. All of that's true. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to understand they're going to operate in their own best interest. <laughs> when you have a bunch of plumbers get together at the union hall and someone outside goes, oh, they're talking about shit in their own best interest. Make shit better for them. Is that guy a conspiracy theorist saying that? No. When someone talks about, a reporter writes about, a whole bunch of fucking cops getting together at the Police Benevolent Association, whatever the hell it is, whatever their union is. And they're getting together, and the reporter writes, yep, they're clearly doing something that's going to benefit the cops. Is that a conspiracy theory? No. But when you talk about big business doing the exact same thing, what does that do? It's a pastime. It's football. People say, ah, who cares? <laughs> we have to understand, Rome didn't fall in a day. It collapsed through incrementalism, piece by piece, brick by brick. Aqueduct by aqueduct. And this is what we're talking about. Little chunks of our faith in this great experiment being eroded for no other reason than somebody has money and they want more fucking money. And because they have enough money and enough influence to make sure that you and I talking about this are conspiracy theorists, whack jobs. Who would ever do that? <laughs> the football... The rigging of the Florida State thing, choice, decision, was obvious. What happened last night with the Detroit game being, be, Detroit being r r r uh, robbed, I couldn't even think of it, I was going to say raped, but with the Detroit thing being robbed, as obvious as it was, and then they had the audacity, the, the, the reporters had the audacity to say to, to the guy, 68, who reported to the ref, and the ref ran and told him, said, well, what happened? And he said, well, uh, I don't want to get into trouble. <coughs> they would punish him for telling the truth. That's the player. Because it looks bad for the NFL. They would literally fine him tens of thousands of dollars might even sit him out of game. 
depending on how viral his statement goes. Their coach, Detroit's coach, who I like, everybody likes. He's a fucking coach. He's a coach's coach. He's just, he's like Mike Tomlin. He's one of those dudes. He's taller. He's wider. But he's, he's like Mike Tomlin. He's an old school fucking coach. He's not some little skinny guy with a fucking abacus doing the statistics. He's a coach. He was fucking pissed. But he knew he couldn't say anything. <coughs> they all know this shit's rigged. Well, you know what I didn't see? I didn't see a single fucking Dallas Cowboy lineman step up and go, yeah, he came and told us 68 was reported. I also didn't see him lying, saying, you know, he came and told us 70 reported. No. Shh. Everyone knows the fix is in. The games are rigged. It served Jimmy fucking, uh, 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 Jerry Jones's interest. <coughs> because he's a billionaire. Fuck everybody else. That's just two little games. Football games. Distractions. Show you another one. These are just, all these are new. These are all just happened recently. <coughs> Remember when I covered Joe Biden's op-ed, Washington Post, talking about how this is going to be best dealt with in Gaza? Two countries living side by side in peace. Nobody's occupying anybody else. There's no fucking uh, blockades. There are no restrictions. If we have to put people together between them, like you and peacekeepers for a little while, that's, that, that's the way we fix. It's the only solution to this thing. That was three weeks into it. And I told you it was obviously written by his people who were around him, who understood the gravity of the situation and that the Palestinians would never fucking fold. This past week, the Biden administration did an end around on, con on Congress and sold $147.5 $147 million more of weapons to glorious Israel. The military industrial complex was going to get their fucking piece of the piece of the pie. People like Bernie Sanders, I showed, I have a video of him talking down below. People like Bernie Sanders had come out in the Senate and said, "You know what? No, we're done. We're not giving them ten billion dollars of the goddamn fucking weapons. Screw you. That's not going to happen. It's not going through. They're killing civilians with this shit." So the military industrial complex, not to be fucking overrun, overrided by anything like democracy, said, fuck you. And they went straight to the Biden administration and they got $147.5 million worth of fucking deal. Supposedly sold to the Israelis. We're, we're giving the Israelis the fucking $147.5 million and they're giving it to our goddamn defense contractors. This military industrial complex. Fuck you. Fuck your democracy. Fuck what the people want. Fuck the ammunition being used to bomb fucking children. Fuck you. We want our goddamn money. Florida State case. ESPN. Fuck you. We want our money. Detroit game. Last night. Dallas. Fuck you. We want our goddamn money. And now, the military industrial complex, once again, It's always the fucking same. Ivermectin and the FDA. There's a, where did I have that? I think it's down here, a ways. The FDA, after three years, I posted a link here someplace. After three years, the FDA uh, finally said, you know what, doctors, are, it's okay if doctors prescribe Ivermectin for COVID-19 symptoms. Um, because they had been, for all those years, 
pushing the fucking jabs. Nothing but the jabs, only the jabs. The jabs are the only thing that'll do anything to help us. Ivermectin is horse paste. That's what they did for all those years. It's here somewhere. There it is. It's Leo Homan. Now they finally come around and said, oh, okay, yeah, we were wrong. We were doing our best to help jack those sales, help jack those fucking sales. Pfizer, Moderna, and, and, and uh, BioNTech, we had, to, we, we had to do that for a little while to make it illegal for doctors to prescribe a medicine that fucking worked. That's our FDA, Food and Drug Administration, supposedly free of influence, but they're not because the pharmaceutical companies pay for 65% of their goddamn uh, budget every year, if not more. And of course, uh, if the heads of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the FDA do their job when they retire from public service, then they get rewarded with a board, a seat on the board where they get $250,000 a year for showing up twice a year and doing nothing. It's corporate influence. It's fascism. That's what it is. And it has an effect on us every single fucking day. There's no question. Here's... You can read this. Go to the Epoch Times. He cites the Epoch Times and others. But you can go to my website and see that and read that for yourself. Every single fucking day, more of this shit is coming out. Here's an, here's, here's an example. New York Times. Paper of record. They set the gold standard when it comes to fascist propaganda. Oh, look. Experts said everyone should consider getting vaccinated. Give yourself a New Year's present by getting this vaccine if you haven't done it yet. Here's the article. If you want to go see it. I can pull it up because I have to pay $17 a fucking month for that shit. But there you go. You probably can't, but there you go. They hide that shit. What's this about? Pfizer stock. Pfizer stock is down. It's at the lowest value in five years. Not just since COVID-19. It is at the lowest value in five fucking years. And they're down 50%. As you can see right here. They are down 50%. <coughs> since last year. Same time last year. That's why the New York Times is doing that. Yeah, go out and get your useless fucking jab for something that basically is 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 resembling a cold now. Oh my God, it's a new variant. The uh, what do they call it? The J one N one J one J N one whatever the fuck it is. The new variant J N one. How about Moderna? Moderna's lost $100 per share since Wednesday, January the 18th of this year. Still this year. $100 a share. It's 197.2. It's at 99.45. I know that's not $100 exactly. I round it up. They lost $100 per share in a year. You mean to tell me they're not pressuring people to get those jabs in arms? This is what fucking fascism looks like. When corporations run your government, they run everything. And in the end, they remake the country into their own model, which serves only their interest at our expense. That, by the way, is what Mussolini described as fascism. And that's where we fucking live. I talked the other day about the fact that there's a holdup in the World Health Organization's 
treaty, the pandemic treaty, 193 countries. This is number six on our list, so I think. 193 countries, all getting together, working out what's the best way we can fight things. Who's holding it up? Big Pharma. Well, Big Pharma's not a country. Fuck you. Fuck you. We got money. And we have influence and power. So, what's holding it up? They are pissed off that the World Health Organization and the world believes, you know what? It would make sense if when somebody has a vaccine, if poorer countries can't afford it, then they make that vaccine available so that they can make it as a generic and sell it to their, or give it to their fucking people. Fuck you, money. <coughs> Let me give you an example of how this trickles down. Trickles, 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 trickles. Why, 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 why is a business holding up a negotiation between 193 countries? How is that possible? Fascism. Oh, okay. Because typically what the governments would say is, fuck you. <coughs> this is how we do things. And you can just make your best money as you can, and we'll do the best we can to help you out. But you don't dictate to us how things are going to work. Money. Fuck you. We got money. Let me tell you a story. Christmas story. Happened last week. Down here. I believe St. Pete. Woman. 23 years old. 10 month old. 6 year old. She has. Those are her kids. Christmas Eve. She's visiting with her parents, who still have her two siblings, a 14-year-old boy and a 13-year-old boy, 15-year-old boy and a 14-year-old boy. They go out shopping, and they're going to go to the grandparents' house, and they're shopping for gifts. The 15-year-old is pissed off <coughs> that the mother, not the sister, the mother is spending too much money on the 13 or 14 year old boy. He's not getting equal fucking dollar value to his gifts and he's pissed off. He's angry and they're fighting in the stores. And they say, fuck this, let's go to the... So they, they all pile into, it's a whole bunch of them, and they all pile into a car and they drive to grandma's house. To grandmother's house we go. Remember that song? This is, this is the new version of it. They pile in the car and they go to grandma's house and they're hanging out at grandma and the <coughs> two boys are still pissed because one got more gifts, more money. And so the 14-year-old pissed off at the 15-year-old pulls a gun on the 15-year-old, his own brother. The 14-year-old has a gun. The sister steps in and takes the 14-year-old outside and says, no, 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 no. This is Christmas. This is Christmas Eve. I got my 10-month-old here. <coughs> I got my 6-year-old here. We're not playing that. Stop it. 14-year-old shoots her. Shoots her. Because they're pissed off about fucking money. About gifts. The 15-year-old comes out, sees he shot the fucking sister. She's dying on the goddamn ground. She dropped the fucking 10-month-old she, that she was holding when he shot her. The 15-year-old shoots the 14-year-old because he's got a gun. <coughs> money, money, trickle it down, trickle money. You're not spending enough money. The fuck is wrong with people? I'll tell you what's wrong with people. We worship the wrong things. That's what's wrong with people. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care if it's Santeria. 
I don't care if it's Hinduism. As long as it's not mammon. That's what corporate America worships. And they have taught people through various means, television, music, that they too must worship the money and getting the money. And so here we are, a soulless fucking people shooting each other on Christmas Eve because we didn't get the proper fucking value of the gifts this year. What the fuck? Those lives, all those lives, the lives of the 10-month-old, the life of the fucking six-year-old, the life of the woman, the life of the 14-year-old, the life of the 15-year-old, the life of their mother <coughs> and their grandmother, forever irreparably harmed. Because all shit is about is money. You worship the wrong fucking things. That's what corporate America, that's what corporatism, that's what fascism teaches you. Dr. Vinay Prasad, somebody tried to tell me it's not Prasad. That's what he has on his website. He did a neat, an, 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 an interesting little fucking thing here. I'm not going to play it for you, but there's an interesting little thing here. The old NIH director is still not being honest about masking. Uh, he's mentioning the fact that this guy, he shows a, a clip from this guy talking about it, saying, well, we were kind of wrong at first about the masking, but then we got the masking right, and we, 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 we discovered that, yes, of course, masks will save everybody's lives. <laughs> so we pushed that story, but, and he's still lying. He's still fucking lying, which is what Vinay points out. It's still, because in the New York Times article that I talked about, they mentioned masking. Oh, yeah, we, you know, masking saves lives. Everyone knows that's bullshit. Everyone knows that's bullshit. And as Vinay points out, at first they had it right. Then all of a sudden, within a short period of time, even, even Fauci said, during an interview, you remember that? Fauci came out and said, hey, masking's not gonna do anything for fucking, wearing surgical masks is not gonna do anything for, for spreading of a, of a coronavirus. They're trying to catch a fucking minnow with a whale net. It doesn't work. But eight, eight days later, nine days later, 10 days later, they had all turned. In spite of the fact that there had been 14 peer-reviewed, well-done studies in the years before showing that surgical masks do nothing to stop the spread of coronaviruses or flus or uh, things like that. It doesn't work. In fact, other studies show it makes you worse, makes you sicker, because you walk around with this soddy old fucking thing and you, you're breathing it and inhaling it, and whatever you, whatever you cough up that's big enough to be caught by the fucking mask, it's just sitting there, warm, toasty, being breathed back in. It's 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 one hundred percent counterintuitive. Everyone knew that. This guy is still pushing the fucking lie. What happened? Why did they have that big transition? That big transition was because they wanted people afraid. They wanted people afraid. They wanted it to stop it, the transmission of any any possibility large, somebody coughs or something like that. Well, that's one way people spread immunity. You share immunity just like you share fucking viruses. It just That's just how it fucking works. We don't want that because they wanted this. They needed this. Now, you can say it was the military that, that made it, and that's true. You can say it was the military who then pushed the fucking vaccines. Also true. Warp speed. Absolutely fucking true. But behind what the military does, they don't just go off and say, you know what, we're going to do a fucking virus. Behind what they do is what the corporations want. And we know, after all these years, how they have been manipulating this 
in order to achieve what they wanted with the Great Reset. COVID-19 and the Great Reset. We know where it came from. It wasn't the fucking military. They were contracted. They made it. They made. They had. They they paid to make the fucking vaccine. They they're probably the ones who went to fucking uh, the head of Pfizer. When the head of Pfizer talked about the fact that they came to me and said you're going to use these fucking mRNA things, and I said, "Well, you're crazy. We do it the other way." And they said, "You're going to do this," and I said to people. Who the hell tells a billion dollar corporation, the head of the billion dollar corporation, you're going to do it this way? Who has a boss? Who has a side? Well, the military did. But also, the World Economic Forum does. Regardless of where you think it came from, all of that being true, regardless of where you think it came from, in the end, it came from fucking big business. It came from big business interests. They have a plan. They're going to kick off this fucking fourth industrial revolution. The Reich of a thousand years is going to be fulfilled. And that's what they did. And one of the things they needed, they needed separation, they needed lockdowns, and they needed masking to get people ready and afraid enough to take the fucking jabs. And so, science out the window. There was a higher calling. And the higher calling was the fucking money and the business interests. Watch that video from uh, Vinay Prasad. Watch that video, I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> Lastly, I think. So I've done ivermectin. I've done the, uh, the, the get the shot thing from the New York Times. Done the who, done Vinay, done the football stuff and the weapons sales. Let's talk about this. Last, last, uh, last day of the year, <coughs> my neighbors across the street had to get out. I helped Vern get the vehicle. He had to get a fucking uh, U-Haul. Did that Friday. He had his friends come over who weren't sick, uh, help him move. And he is now gone. And that's the duplex across the street. He's been there since I've been here, which is about nine years. He's been there 18. Uh, the next door neighbor who lives in the duplex with him, Holly, also had to get out. You see, their building was owned by a family for all these years, going on two decades for fucking Vern. As a way to make additional money uh, as an investment property. And he's been with them for 18 years. Holly was with them for uh, as long as, a little, bit, a, little bit, a little bit longer than I've been here. Um, they had leases, everything was all, all good, uh, until some business like BlackRock or State Street or Vanguard or Goldman Sachs uh, and their little fucking subsidiary came in and bought them out and threw a bunch of money at them, bought them up, and then told these guys they had they gave them less than fucking 31 days to get the fuck out. They said, we can make more money without you guys here, so get the fuck out. Period. You're driving the prices up. So, they had to leave. Um, which is sad, because I like both of them. I like Holly. I like... Um, um, Holly's boyfriend, I like uh, Kwame, I like Byrne, but big business, just comes in, takes over, get the fuck out. I had to go through all of this stuff with Vern to get him accepted on this new lease, and he got it, <laughs> uh, but it was a bunch of hoops to jump through for big business, so he's renting from another big business. Because you can't, you can almost, it's almost impossible to find out somebody who owns properties and a small individual. My, I'm, I'm lucky, my landlord, uh, but he owns 200 properties. So he's a mid sized business and they haven't, they haven't targeted him yet. They're still going for the small, small fish. The sharks are still fucking feasting on the guppies. 
every day. Every single day, we see something that big business is doing to us. I was talking to my doctor about that. <coughs> I talked to my landlord about that, about the fucking shit they're doing. Every single day, we are seeing the end results of fascist takeover. And I guarantee you, something is going to happen between now and November of 2024. Something bad is going to happen in terms of our election. And we're just going to have to deal with it. You know, we see all these different fucking movies coming out now about civil war and, and, and uprisings and this, that, and the other. Um, a couple of them coming out now implying that our own government's going to do shit to us, try to make it look like some other goddamn country, country. This is going to get worse and worse. This is, this all ends <coughs> if we stand up and say there's no more, we're not going to allow any more fascism in this fucking country. We get rid of every single person in Congress, every single one of them, go. A vote of no confidence. You can do that in other countries, not in our democracy. You can't, quote unquote, democracy. You can't, but you can. But enough people say, fuck you, we're done. No more work. We're shutting down everything. We're shutting down. Why do you think they're making it, trying to make it illegal to shut down, to make it illegal to block businesses or block thoroughfare? Because they know. When this shit gets rolling, people are going to come to the same conclusion they did back in the Occupy days. Only they're not going to be as easily infused with fucking feds as the Occupy people were. Unfortunately, they didn't see that coming. People like Tim Pool helped the fucking feds do that. And of course, now Tim Pool is very wealthy. Surprise, surprise. What a shock. I don't know, it, it, this is not a year-end message of hope. It's kind of, a, it's kind of depressing. I'll give you that. It is. But you know, that's, you, have to be, you have to be honest. You know, dealing with another fucking issue. Uh, you know, first step is to acknowledge you got the issue. Because until you do that, you're not going to be able to fix anything. You're going to keep fucking messing with shit on the edges. It's not going to fix it. Half measures will serve you nothing. Our problem isn't socialism. It isn't communism. It isn't the fucking China, 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 China. And it's damn sure not Vladimir Putin. Our problem is right here. Osama bin Laden told reporters that, oh, November of 2001. Our problem is right here. That makes it more difficult and easier simultaneously to fix it. We fix that. We fix a lot of shit. We can argue about left versus right fucking ideology all you want after that. What we need to do is fix this. There's a decent interview with uh, Whitney Webb, Jimmy Dore did. I'm not going to post a link to it. I don't have it on here, but uh, because most of his shit's behind a paywall anyway, that greedy prick. But at one point in time, when Whitney's talking to him, she says, you know, listen, for the longest time, people in the alt-right were being told, were being misled that all the problems and all the COVID shit came from the damn commies in China, 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 China. She says, now they're starting to understand that's not the fucking truth. That's not where this is coming from. We see it every single fucking day. We see it. Every day. The little things like football games, the big things like having to fucking get a U-Haul and put your whole life in a box and drive it someplace else. 
We see it in little things like the World Health Organization having to hold up because big business, big pharma says, no, 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 you can't make a fucking treaty without our influence and without our okay. And we see it in the big things. Big pharma saying, we're going to put these fucking jabs in your six-month-old children and there ain't nothing you can do about it. We see it every fucking day, all around us. It's time we start calling it out for what it fucking is. This is what the Reich of a thousand years is going to look like, and it's going to look worse. This is, this is, this is the, these are the birth pangs of the Great Reset. And as bad as it is now, it's just going to get much worse in the future if no one says fucking nothing. Now, I understand I'm not calling out anybody on any football team. But, you know, those guys last night, the coach and that player, for fear of retribution, they're like... Fuck that shit. This doesn't stop with rigged fucking games. This stops with them controlling every fucking penny you make and every thought that you have and every word that you speak. They've been doing this for a while. This war against populism has started. I, I wrote about this in 2016. <laughs> there, was a, there was an article out of, I think, The Guardian talking about, you know, oh, my God, the worst thing ever, populism. we got to deal with this rise in populism. And it wasn't just Brexit. It wasn't just fucking Donald Trump. It's also Greece. There were a number of fucking indicators. And, of course, Occupy. There were a number of fucking indicators. And then, of course, fucking Yemen and, and, and Egypt. They were losing control. The idea, of, the, the idea of populism was spreading. And corporate fucking, the corporate West and the ownership of, all the, of the westernized countries were panicking. We can't lose fucking control. And that's when they started all this fucking censorship routine. I lost my fucking first website, first fucking channel in, in 2018. And my website that I had for 11 years and my PayPal account. Gone. Zip. This is the war. This is the fight. It has always been. And you're either on one side or the other. Now, um, with that depressing fucking news, I will wish you a very happy New Year's Eve. I'm going to be sitting here <laughs> hunkering down in the bathroom with all my animals as my neighbors spend hundreds of dollars on fucking things that blow up in the air. Woohoo! Wee! Yeah, wow, sky flowers. But um, I hope you guys have a very nice New Year's Eve. Be safe and uh, have a good start to your new year. And I will talk to you guys next year. Bo says bye.